about my doctoral research that um, investigated cognitive ecologies of stage presence in dance and performance. And the plan for today's talk, it's, um, I'm gonna say um, something very brief about my background and my current research. And then I'm gonna focus on the methodology that I, I used in this work. And I uh, will sketch the, the problem of the classic model of stage presence in performance. And then I will discuss um, the results of my study. Um, and I will illustrate uh, the uh, alternative models of presence that I developed uh, through my field work. We will focus on contemporary ballet, hunting improvisation, and body weather. Uh, those are the three dance forms that I investigated during my doctoral research. And I will say something about what this um, approach can be uh, useful and what are possible future directions. And, and then there will be time for questions an answer and a discussion. So very briefly, um, I'm assistant professor in dance at the University of Southern Denmark. And I'm part of the uh, uh, research unit, uh, Movement, Culture and Society, led by um, Suzanne Raun, uh, who came to visit you sometimes a um, couple of months ago, I reckon. I did my PhD in cognitive science at Macquarie University in Sydney and have a master in uh, cultural and medical anthropology from the University of Bologna. And I have a bachelor in visual arts from um, the University uh, Pantheon Sorbonne in Paris. Um, I'm a former professional dancer. I have spent many years uh, studying and uh, performing internationally, ballet and contemporary dance. Um, and I had the chance to work with uh, some um, international um, and renowned uh, choreographers, including William Forsyth, Wayne McGregor, and Karen Carlson, and many more. Um, my current uh, research embraces um, an interdisciplinary approach. So uh, I work across cultural and medical anthropology, phenomenology of the body and illness, dance, um, and embodied cognition. Um, currently, my research explores dance and creative movement practices at the intersection of arts and health, processes of meaning making, healing, and well-being. And my research interests include dance, performance, and cognition, in this creative arts and processes of healing, cancer survivorship, and nonlinear embodied narrative and transformative experience. So due to a serious illness, um, back in the days, I had to interrupt my dance career. And this event set me on a long transformative journey that I uh, conducted through some research, uh, employ an autoethnographic perspective. And here are some of the, uh, the publication that um, came out of um, investigation of my own illness experience. Um, so during this time, um, I explored other ways of being in the world. Um, and the illness experience um, provided me this, um, uh, this possibility, I'm not gonna say opportunity, but possibility to, uh, to explore all the ways of um, being, feeling, sensing, and thinking. Um, and those those time, I could say that I felt lost more than I ever felt present. So that's where my interest in presence um, stems from. So my research stemmed from understanding how other people feel, experience, and think about presence. So I wanted to uh, understand uh, the experience of presence and how people or performers, dancers, make sense of their presence through their mindful bodies. So my approach um, to research 
has been influenced by my lived experience of illness. And this intense experience of losing presence after um, have, having undergone uh, many um, cancer treatments made me realize the central body, uh, the central role played by the body in shaping the way we think, in shaping cognition, and how thinking and how cognition extend beyond the brain and is modulated by um, the social and cultural context and the practice that um, we, we are involved in and immersed. Um, so on these premises, I started to look at how different dance forms shape different bodies, which in turn enact different forms of presence. So in this research, um, I ask how certain groups of people, very peculiar people though, experience, think and talk about presence in their daily practices through their mindful bodies. So I conducted a multi-site moving fieldwork that was a transient, partial and plural as the bodies who um, produced it um, across Europe and Australia. And during this time, I explored contemporary ballet in the specific case of the um, national ballet in Marseille, France, and the staging of a dance piece called Passione by Emio Greco and Peter Scholten, the former artistic directors of the company. And then I explore contact improvisation um, and a very peculiar event uh, called the Global Underscore that I will discuss later. Um, and I explore contact improvisation uh, mostly in Italy. And I also uh, address body weather, um, which I will say uh, much more in a, in a few minutes. Um, and I address body weather in the context in Australia, in the context of the uh, company uh, led by Tess De Quincy, an Australian um, choreographer. So the work that I present here is not uh, intended to be a comprehensive description of presence in dance, nor, uh, nor I seek any universal generalization of how dancers experience presence um, kinesthetically. So instead, my work uh, presents a specific account of the way presence is understood and performed in three dance forms. So in doing so, I hope to illuminate the complexity of phenomena of presence in performance and how these are shaped by different artistic traditions, by different mindful bodies and different dance practices. So talking about methodology, um, my approach, uh, ironically enough, begins by being there and experiencing what presence feels like uh, and what it means for the people who perform and enact it. So I address the experience of presence among diverse groups of performers, uh, and engaging with the phenomenological, cognitive ecological, and ethnographic approach. And this approach uh, includes um, um, several um, uh, several approaches and. Some are, just to mention a few, thick description, somatic attention, thick participation, apprenticeship and embodied learning, and an active ethnography. Uh, that is an engaged form of participant observation, um, termed by um, Loïc Vacan. And this approach to research uh, consists in conducting immersive fieldwork based on performing the phenomenon which um, in my case means training and practicing together with the participants of my study. And this methodology aims at reducing the, um, the distance between the observer and the observed, enabling the ethnographer, the researcher to gain a closer perspective and deeper understanding of the pra practices under investigation by engaging with this form of observation through the body, through, um, through the movement. All right. So in Western culture, the concept of presence 
um, holds a cluster of different connotation and encompasses ontological, metaphysical, and existential cognitive performative dimensions. So presence is something that um, depends on in which field uh, we, we address it, um, presents a variety of, of meaning and of understanding. So I focus on a particular type of presence that in theater and performing arts goes with the name of stage presence. And then I briefly illustrate the limits of um, such understanding. So what I'm gonna talk about and refer to is the idea of stage presence that is defined um, by the Oxford English Dictionary as the ability to command the attention of a theater audience or an audience by the impressiveness of one's manner or appearance. And this idea of the presence of the performer, it's something that um, in Western culture has a very deep um, and long origin. It's something that it's kind of ingrained in our mindset in a way. And to make an example, uh, the literature in theater and performing arts um, tribe with descriptions of, of the presence of the performer, of the performance of the actor, of the artist, um, that illustrates this um, metaphysical quality or um, this charisma, this, um, this power. So this is a quote from um, um, it's a quote from an early modern um, theater director that um, somehow um, expressed this idea that the, the actor, the performer is the center and all the attention is conveyed, all the attention of the audience is conveyed uh, towards this center. And to give you another example, trace back um, a century ago, uh, famous actress Sarah Bernard in her um, um, biography, in her um, treatise on the art of acting, uh, wrote that actors must create an atmosphere by their sincerity. So the public, uh, gasping distracted, should not regain its equilibrium and free will until the fall of the curtain as strong is the power to enchant the audience and to um, gather the attention of the audience. So this idea of stage presence as a quality, a prerogative of the performer um, is something that Sherman, uh, um, performing uh, arts uh, scholar, define or identify as this classic model, a classic view of stage presence. And this idea that uh, presence results from either rigorous training, so some presence it's, can become a skill that can be trained, or it's like a, a, a natural or innate ability or charisma, a mesmerizing energy, uh, or a combination of both. Um, is um, is what identify this idea of uh, classic model of stage presence, and there are some some issues with this view. Um, for Sherman, this um, the view that see um, presence a prerogative of the skilled performer is that he neglects uh, audience participation and see. Um, attendance audience without agency. Um, so according to Sherman, um, this view um, that see um, presence, um, that focus on the on the power of the, the, the performance presence, um, conceals audience participation because it describes something that happens to them and perception become passive. Uh, more like reception, something that happens to the perceiver. But uh, if we looked at how um, inactive approaches to cognition um, say about perception, 
um, they have been stared at. Perception does not happen to people, but it's rather this, it's rather something that people do uh, actively. So the limit of this model is that by focusing only on the performance agency, on her charisma or charm, um, it neglects the interactive and multidimensional aspects embedded in the performance event. So here I provide a diagram, a model that exemplifies <clears throat> this classic view of stage presence, uh, exemplified by the, <clears throat> by the red arrow pointing towards the audience and radiate, radiating from the performer. And uh, in yellow, uh, the yellow uh, square uh, represents the, the performance space. And um, in green, the green circle is the, the performance ecology that includes the performers, the audience, and the action and, the, and this interaction. So I'm going to provide alternative diagrams uh, later using the same color scheme and the same components of, of this model. And um, I will show how different performance ecologies uh, operate differently and how different um, enactments of pre presence emerge um, in different contexts. So some scholars, the scholars in performance who adopted uh, an inactive and phenomenological perspective to this idea of stage presence, um, argue that uh, I've questioned this view um, that theatrical presence is an individual prerogative of the performer and uh, starts to accounting for the complexity of such phenomena. And in the field of performance studies, there have been a greater attention to analysis of performance practices um, through cognitive approaches, and in particular towards the 4E cognition theory, um, a recent current in cognitive science that recognized the central role of the body in shaping the mind. <clears throat> to address um, phenomena of presence in performance, I adopted a cognitive ecological framework. And cognitive ecology is a growing field in cognitive science that understands cognition, not as internal to the individual, but as constituted by uh, the interaction and interconnection of perception, action, and thought across particular social being and um, complex environments. And um, I think cognitive ecological theory provides a useful framework to investigate to investigating cognitive processes in the relationship between the social and the material. And as cognitive anthropologist uh, Edwin Actings observed, an understanding of cognitive phenomena must include a consideration of the environment in which cognitive processes develop and operate. Um, and another quote by um, theater scholar uh, Evelyn Tribble and uh, philosopher Don Sutton um, described cognitive ecologies um, as the multidimensional context in which we remember, feel things and communicate, imagine and act um, on the fly, collaboratively and in a rich and going interaction with our environment. So this framework um, uh, the, is the perfect candidate through candidate through which um, um, address, tackle, and um, understand and frame phenomena of presence um, in performance. So um, from, in my research, um, my aim was to understand this, this phenomena um, in, uh, in context. And uh, rather than a metaphysical ideal or a personal quality, um, my view of presence contains an emergent distributed process that occurs across the audience, the performers, the cultural context, and the environment. So um, drawing on these approaches to cognitive ecology, I suggest alternative um, ecological models in which the performance presence 
emergence in relation to this complexity, to this complex and dynamic environment. And this environment include audience and performers, co-presence, how they construct meaning, the social cultural context, and the situatedness of the aesthetic performative, um, the aesthetic performance event. I'd like now to introduce you <clears throat> um, one of my uh, case study, the fieldwork I conducted in uh, France, in Marseille, and have explored this notion of stage presence in contemporary ballet. <clears throat> um, during the staging of this uh, piece, Passione, by Italian choreographer Ennio Greco, and uh, the dramaturg Peter Shouldern. Um, these artists were the former artistic directors of the ballet. And during my fieldwork, I attended the version of Passione that was um, danced by seven dancers of the ensemble. And, uh, <clears throat> sorry, Passione, this piece was uh, originally created as a solo by the choreographer. Um, and after he took the direction of the ballet, he recreated the piece uh, for the company. So it started as, um, as a long solo. Um, I'm going to show you this. Let me see what time, how much time we have. Um, I'm going to show you this uh, short video just to give you um, yeah, a sense of what the performance is about. But then I'll, I'll, I'll say something more. I'll, I'll give you some more information, <clears throat> see if it works. Irriverente, fisico, sacro. Body, piano, light. society so i'm just gonna stop you here because <clears throat> uh, i don't want to go over time it's uh, but if, if we have time i'm happy to um share the videos with you uh, later um another thing that i want i would like to add before um i, I, I tell you something more about the piece is that the the directors <clears throat> they uh, also developed uh, an artistic um manifesto um, and that also this manifesto is uh, provides also the direction of Passione. And here you can see the, the seven uh, principles of this manifesto. Um, I want to say that Passione is a piece constituted by seven different solos and every solo embeds uh, and it's inspired by it, one of this uh, principle. Um, there are other elements that uh, included in this performance um, that have to do with uh, the metaphysical presence of God as the name. Uh, it's a work inspired by St. Matthew, Passion of uh, Christ, and the music. Um, it's the homonymous composition by Johann Sebastian Bach. Um, so there's this this element of of uh, of the, the presence of of God or Christ, and there are this uh, the elements of the the, man, the artistic manifesto. Um, so given this premises, um, I I thought that um, what what I would hear from the dancer um, about their understanding of presence. Um, was somehow like I, I somehow had like the perfect example of uh, of the the power of the the presence of the performer uh, in the vision rectified by the, the classic model. 
But as soon as I started my fieldwork, a very different um, picture started to emerge. Um, so I'd like to share some quotes from um, from the from the dancer I talked to. Um, one dancer talks about how he worked with the choreographer um, and how uh, the choreographer vision of how to enhance this present is not really, it, it's about um, being aware, be aware of the surroundings, be aware of, uh, of you are, and in this way you, you create this um, interaction with people, with the audience. Another dancer talked about the atmosphere that it's created in the in the theater and the atmosphere that it's created um, between and during the performances. As I mentioned before, is a piece that it's uh, it's constituted by a series of solos. So there's one dancer on stage at a time, um, but the dancer we're talking about um, they didn't feel it in this way. They they saw it. Uh, talked about um, an atmosphere that's created and also the, the audience that creates this atmosphere. Another dancer um, illustrated this presence as the capacity to blend together with energy with the other dancers, even though they're not present on stage and with the, with the dramaturgy, with the choreography, with the, with the movements and the steps. Um, and driving on, on my fieldwork, I, I suggest an interpretation of stage presence in contemporary ballet um, as distributed and embodied. And similarly to the, the classic model of presence, um, the, 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 the stage of the performance is, is the stage of the theater, uh, but the, uh, the, the the arrows points um, in both directions. So there's this tension uh, from the uh, from the audience uh, towards the the dancer, the performance as well. And um, in this um, context, presence is not under, understood as an individual skill, nor as a quality of the singular performer, but as an uh, affective state arising from mindful interactions and it's distributed across the various elements of the performance ecologies um, um, and the energy emanating by the dancer and um, and the choreographer so there's also this presence of the choreographer through the the bodies and through the dramaturgy of um, of the piece so there's a, like a, a cluster, an array of presences that interact uh, and act and are enacted together. And if you're curious to know more about the transmission of kinesthetic knowledge from the choreographer to, to the dancer of the ensemble, um, I have a chapter in the Oxford Handbook of Contemporary Ballet that um, illustrates this, um, uh, this case study, this fieldwork. So my research also engaged with contact um, improvisation um, as for those who might not uh, know, contact improvisation is a duet system based dance practice that was initiated in the seventies by members of the Justin uh, Dance Theater in New York, in the US and choreographers such as Steve Paxton and Nancy Stark Smith among many others. And since its early inception, content improvisation has become uh, a prominent expression of postmodern uh, dance and, um, and art. And uh, nowadays, workshops, jams, and festivals are organized and practiced uh, worldwide. And it has become a worldwide phenomenon. And part of my research um, was to <clears throat> uh, investigate um, the event of the global underscore, um, which is a very important event for the contact improvisation community uh, internationally. And it's an event, it's a jam session that lasts four hours and happens once a year uh, during the period of the summer solstice uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. 
and the special event, um, the time I, I attended in 2017 uh, in Italy, but um, a jam session were happening simultaneously in many other places across the globe, precisely in 55 countries simultaneously, depending on the, the time. So, so people would dance at three in the morning or, or yeah, at 10 in the evening and where they were. And it was also streamed um, online. So everybody could join in and be connected also through, um, through this network. Um, so the global underscore um, is also a framework for practicing um, and research dance improvisation that was developed in the 90s by Nancy Stark Smith, one of the con contact improvisation uh, initiator, to guide dancers' experience through the changing states of the jam. And now, um, maybe um, just for the sake of time, I'm gonna skip the video, but if we have time, I'll. I'll show you some video. This is just a, a duet of content improvisation to give you a sense of what this dance forms look like. And let me know if that's okay. And if we are over time, um, yeah, I'll just move a bit um, faster. So I'm just gonna skip that. And I'd like to share some quotes from, uh, from the participants of um, my research. So Katerina Mochler, she's an international content improvisation teacher and facilitator, and um, she described uh, the underscore in relation to presence, has a practice about presence, and this different series and changes of states of this presence. She talks about presence become an awareness um, that dancer creates, and that also change and it morphs through, through the experience, through the unfolding of the dance. And another quote um, specifically about the global underscore um, is that since also this dance is um, uh, was streamed and uh, people were connecting from all um, from many different places um, and through the dance you also connect to memories, sensation, and experiences that you shared, perhaps. Uh, Another time with uh, with dancers that are in different um, environments and different places, and so it's also like it's also a tap into uh, this broader network of memories and past experiences and present experiences, and everything kind of feedbacks in and out. And she describes it as a flux of information, technique, and movement. Um, so. In, in this context, I, um, I presented a, an intern kinesthetic social model of presence in, con in contact improvisation. Um, here, the, the yellow circle represents the space uh, of the performance. And both audience and uh, performance um, are embedded in this um, feedback loop of mutual influence. And for those who might not know, uh, during content improvisation jams, dancer can decide to stop the dance and become audience at any point during the unfolding of the jam, as well as people who might have started as, oh, just go there to, to, to watch a performance, they can join in at any point, whenever they feel like. Um, so there's there's um, there's not set boundaries between audience and participants, and because of this interchangeable role of being both performers and audience, in this context of practice, presence emerge through an interconnected loop of mutual influence between the the various elements of the jam. Um, and um, for further insight into uh, this ethnographic material and how. Um, skills and agency develops in dance. Uh, I can direct you direct you to to um, publication to recent publication um, on um, con improvisation and the importance of interkinesthetic sense of agency. I'm happy to discuss it more later if uh, if we have time. And um, and also. Um, uh, another recent publication on uh, 
the sense or the tuning to attunement to uh, the environment and how um, this attunement changes um, the, um, the perception of the performance. And I looked at uh, two different forms, kind of improvisation and body weather, which I'm gonna uh, say something now. And that this is the last dance form that I investigated in my in my work. And body weather is um, a radical anti-hierarchical movement ideology developed by a Japanese choreographer, Min Tanaka, back in the 70s and 80s, and is linked, um, or shares some features with Buto, a more known uh, form of um, contemporary dance or postmodern Japanese dance theater. Um, but body weather, um, is a training method that um, that research the interconnected relationship across bodies and the environment. There's, there's a strong focus on uh, tuning to to the environment, to to the to a place. So, in body weather, the body of the performer, the body is not conceived as a fixed entity, something to train or um, or something to to act. Uh, upon, but is is conceived as the weather, so constantly changing and transforming. And another very important idea in body weather is the idea of the space as a dancing partner. Um, so, body sorry, body weather was first introduced into Australia by Tess De Quincy, an Australian choreographer who worked with me in Tanaka back in the days, and introduced body weather in Australia. And I conduct my fieldwork uh, among members of the Test the Quincy Company. And one of my interviewees, a um, performer artist in Body Weather, um, provided me this account of, um, of this idea of space as a dancing uh, partner. Um, and she talks about um, how the body is inhabiting space. And that feels like um, that almost as much as about the body as space, sculpted by space. And I'd like to share a couple of uh, two more quotes from, uh, from the choreographer, the director, Tess De Quincy, um, that focus on this idea of be danced by space. Um, that's something that Min Tanaka was used to say um, to, um, um, and yet yeah, she mentioned that the importance of somehow giving up uh, or undoing, or giving up this agency and, and immerse and, and feel how, what it means to be dense or to become danced rather than dancing or moving in a space. And she provides a more detailed account and she, she explained this idea, um, comparing it with her experience in um, in Western dance forms such as ballet. So she said that I was used to this expression, cut the space with your arms, which we do in ballet. But all of this centered, all of this is centered through the self-centering of the human, uh, where if your arms get danced by space, by the intricacy of the stories, that gives power to something beyond the human that also expand the presence because one is engaging in uh, and in exchange with those histories and sensitivities. And a very beautiful um, quote. Um, so in this context of practice, I call the experience of presence in body weather omnicentral and situated to emphasize the, the features of this practice that include a development of heightened and sensory awareness and interceptive sensitivity and also Mintanaka notions of omnicentrality, which can be understood as a displacement of the focus from the performer to the environment in which she's immersed. And uh, in this dance form, in body weather, the, the audience is considered inseparable from the environment in which a performer is immersed. So, so everything is part of that environment. Um, and in this diagram, the, the body of the performer is in yellow because that's the body of the performer is also the stage in which the performance takes place, in where the performance unfolds. 
um, and I have a lot, I have another example that I'd like to show you, but probably we don't have time, maybe later, um, or I can send you the link. It's a beautiful film. Uh, it's five minutes um, durational performance, um, um, screen dance film by um, a visual artist, um, Lux Eterna, who work with body weather as a, as a methodology for, for a practice that I, and I collaborated with uh, Lux on several, um, several projects and if you're interested in know more about um, this ecological agency in body weather i have a chapter in a recent book called the collaborative and body performance ecologies of skill um, that um, discuss and present um, this work by uh, lax eterna and also have a forthcoming paper um, on her approach to um, to um, an embodied ecological um, agency in, in spring dance. So just to conclude, um, so uh, my research account for the role played by the larger performance ecology in shaping the participants' lived experience of presence. Um, and these aspects, highlight how different dance forms are informed by specific traditions and cultural contexts, and that in turn shapes different dance artistic practices and methods um, in the different ways these dance forms um, promote or relate um, and promote different ways of relating, sensing, and uh, enacting presence in performance. So, with this model, I aim to suggest a more complex relationship between performance bodies um, and senses, audience, stage, environment, than the uh, unidirectional uh, model of presence, um, emphasizing the classic model of stage presence. Um, so through this study, I illustrate how the exploration of dancers' lived experience can provide an alternative interpretation of the phenomenon of stage presence that um, move away from uh, this classic notion of presence in performance and to embrace and account for the situational, intersubjective, multidimensional, inactive, and eco ecological um, presence in performance. Um, so by offering a broader understanding of the phenomena of presence in performance, um, I aim to illustrate how cognitive ecological ethnographic approach can provide some adequate tools to address the complexity of phenomena of presence in various performance contexts. And this um, is to inspire a further move away from individual central descriptions to um, to analysis of joint activities, um, interactive collaboration. So I, I reckon this approach is relevant in any context in which it's important to foster an understanding of the mutual informing relationship between the different elements. Um, uh, that is to say, agents, social actors, subjects, and objects participating in the performance ecology and other fields that um, in this, this approach uh, could be relevant um, are obviously other performative domains such as music performance or participation in, in, in different sports and public spaces and events, um, different types of pedagogical context, uh, user experience in new technology, um, as well as studies of interpersonal communication um, such as medical system or care practice um, and doctor patient communication. And um, and that somehow also leads to uh, uh, the next project that I'm very excited about and very happy to share the news <laughs> with you today. Um, a project in collaboration with uh, Mette and uh, dance artist um, Maria uh, Helge Andersen, and uh, that will start next next year, and we will be looking for a postdoc to. To, to join the project 
on uh, transforming illness experience through a co-creative dance practice for young cancer survivors. Um, so thank you so much for your attention today and for uh, being there uh, on that time. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to <laughs> discuss if you have any, any question or anything um, delighted to um, chat with me. Thanks.